Laser sights increase confidence regardless of experience level, whether you're learning the fundamentals or overcoming aging eyes. Crimson Trace, making laser sights standard equipment. Visit crimsontrace.com to find a dealer near you. Today on Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, it's the latest innovation in ammunition, a rising star in the world of gun rights, news from the ever-expanding Six Hour, and more. Call in now with your range reports. One Tom Talk Guns. Now, here's Tom. And we are with you. Tom Gresham here. It's Gun Talk, and we're going to be having some fun over the next few hours talking about guns. And somebody told me that there was an election, so I, I started to look into that. And sure enough, there's one coming up. Who knew? Wow, that's really interesting. Uh, we can talk about that. And, of course, there have been <laughs> there have been developments. Oh, my gosh. The polls have swung, uh, who knows, 10, 12 points in the last three, four days. It's crazy. Uh, do you remember two weeks ago when I said, hey, you know what? I think I'm seeing a switch, a trend, a, a movement, and there, uh, Trump very well may have a chance. And people were saying, oh, Tom, what have you been smoking? What's wrong with you? Holy cow, are you crazy? You know, and at the same time saying, I sure hope you're right, but I don't think so. You never know. You just never know. You know, who, who knows? We'll talk about that. We'll talk about a lot of things today. By the way, if you'd like to join us, it's uh, 866-TALK-GUN. And also, just frankly, it's easier. Just dial Tom Talk Gun, and that will certainly get you in there. Tom, if you are on a landline, dial the one, of course, if you haven't forgotten. <laughs> you ever do that? You've used the cell phone so often that when you go use a landline, you forget that you got to dial one. I have done that. I think I continue to do that. It's uh, use the cell phone so often. It's kind of crazy. So uh, there you go. Oh, by the way, we have uh, winners. We have winners. I have to announce. Let's see here. Uh, winners in the Ruger 1022 takedown giveaway. We're giving away two packages that include a Ruger 1022. And I ask you to post your reasons that you would want one on Twitter and on Facebook. Winner number one, Joel. Uh, he says, over the years, I've listened to most of the podcast of your show. My wife and I have five boys, and while traveling in the car, they often ask to listen to gun talk. Four of our boys are adopted, and the fostering agency has restricted their access to firearms until adoption. Last week, we final, finalized our final adoption. Now we are able to take all of them to the range and hunting, and we would love to make up for lost time with a new Ruger 10 22 rifle. Well, Joel, you're going to be able to do exactly that, exactly that. We're going to be getting that to you. Winner number two is Josh. He says, oh, great enabler. <laughs> He's uh, asking for a rabbit that he can use to smite Cottontail rabbits with his 12-year-old daughter. Well, Josh, we're going to make that happen for you also. That's what's so much fun around here. We uh, we like to give away stuff. We do things. We we talk about the guns that we have. And I'll be asking for your range reports. What have you been shooting? And what are you thinking about buying? Now, I am today in the Kansas City, Kansas area. Been here for several days at the NASGW show. That's the National Association of Sporting Goods Wholesalers, which is a mouthful. What that is is the distributors. Those are big companies that they're the middlemen, if you will. Gun companies will sell to them, and then they sell to dealers. So when a dealer wants a product, a gun, uh, holsters, whatever the product is, they'll call these distributors. And they'll place an order, and then that's because some gun store or gun makers rather will sell directly to dealers. Many of them will use what is called the two-step distribution process. And so at NASDW, the distributors are there, and also the gun manufacturers are there. And often we get to see a few new things that the gun companies have decided not to wait until the shot show in January to reveal. One of the funniest of the whole thing, I got to tell you, was at Remington. We're talking to Remington, and I said, "Hey, I saw the uh, the big poster, the big wall in your booth of your new pistol." The guy looked kind of sheepish. He goes, "Yeah, we weren't going to announce that here, really." 
you weren't going to announce it, but you got the, he says, I know. We got here and someone had put the big picture of the new pistol on the wall of our booth. So we figured, I guess we're going to announce this here. <laughs> it's a full-size um, polymer pistol from Ruger. Pretty cool. Uh, also uh, dropping hints about a 1911 and 10 mm from Remington. Did I say Ruger? I meant Remington. From Remington. So it's a new polymer pistol from Remington and maybe a new 1911 from them in 10. Also, do you remember that Remington bought paraordnance? Of course, paraordnance was known, among other things, for having double stack uh, 1911s. Have no official word on this. Haven't talked to anybody about that, but I'm, I got my fingers crossed. There may be, I hope, I'm thinking, I don't know. They didn't say anything about it, okay? I'm just guessing. <laughs> this is me just hoping that there may be some double stack 1911s in the future. I will also tell you this. I saw a pistol there. We were not allowed to even take photographs of it. It was startling. And I am not kidding. I'm not making this up. It's from a company you never heard of. It's a brand new company. It's the only thing I've ever done. It's a brand new pistol. If they get it into production, and I think they very well might, if they get it into production, think the best of a 1911 and the best of polymer with a really good trigger. I have no idea if it's going to come to pass. And I'm not going to tell you the name of it because it's it may be one of those that we never hear about it again. I've seen that happen before. We We may never hear of it again, but... I hope we do, because it was pretty impressive. Now, I didn't shoot it, of course. Got to handle it. Felt great in the hands. All of that. Pretty cool stuff. We talked to a lot of people at the show. Um, one of the things we did, we talked about politics, which will surprise no one. And I welcome your thoughts on the election. We will be talking about that a fair amount. Our number is 866-TALK-GUN. George has called in on line three out of Jacksonville, Florida. Hello, George. You are on Gun Talk. You're thinking election here? Yeah, exactly, Tom. Thanks for taking my call. Just wanted to uh, – I'm, I'm really hopeful that the polls have uh, swung in our favor and continue that momentum forward. But, uh, Tom, I've been stake bit the past uh, eight years, and, mm-hmm. and I'll tell you, we all know the drill. You know, if she wins, what's going to happen to uh, uh, firearm sales and stuff like that and ammunition? So I would just say I'm preparing myself to – Make sure I've got plenty of primers, powder, bullets, et cetera, because this last uh, episode that we had with Obama, if you think about it, Tom, it's been a good two or three years before things really bounce back normal. Yes. It was almost uh, three years. You're right. And so, you know, I really think also another watchword for us to be very mindful, I'm sure you've talked about it before, is I think their next approach, Tom, is they're not going to go so much for guns anymore. They're going to go after ammunition. Because if you think about it, if they can make ammunition so extremely costly to manufacture, Mm -hmm. or they start imposing velocity limits on all kinds of things, Mm -hmm. you know, you could, they could basically put us, you know, basically make the Second Amendment moot. Well, it's a good point because, you know, Hillary Clinton keeps saying, well, I I support the Second Amendment. And then she always adds, but, you know, or however. Uh, which means I don't support the Second Amendment, and this is how I plan to gut it. But don't, I'm not going to get rid of it. I'm not going to try to repeal it. Because, and people always say, well, you know, she says she supports the Second Amendment. And besides that, as president, she couldn't repeal it. Yeah, I know. But to your point, George, she can make it moot. If you can't buy ammo, and if you can't buy guns, and if what she has called for is the reenactment or the actually uh, getting rid of the protection of gun of gun makers from these bogus lawsuits. If those lawsuits are allowed to continue to go forward, then they can. If they win one, you know, it doesn't take a whole lot. It takes literally one case. If a court finds that gun makers are responsible for the misuse of guns by a third party, in other words, they make a, a legal product and make a safe product and make a non-defective product. And somebody gets it and then goes out and misuses it, and somehow the gunmaker is held responsible for that. That's it. It's over. No more guns are going to be made. So that's what they're going to do. And George, thank you for your call. The other thing they could try, and for those of us who've been around this a long, long time, way back, let me educate you. Way back, the Consumer Product Safety Commission tried 
to regulate handgun ammunition as a hazardous substance. Imagine that. The Consumer Product Safety Commission, nobody's elected there. They're just appointed. And so they said, we're going to regulate and then ban, ban handgun ammunition because it is a, in and of itself, it's a hazardous subject. Well, yeah, it is. Uh, wouldn't be very effective if it wasn't. Congress stepped in and said, whoa, 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 you can't do that. And they took action and removed the ability of the Consumer Product Safety Commission, the CPSC, to regulate firearms and ammunition altogether. Hillary and most of the Democrats running have continuously called for getting rid of that and letting the Consumer Product Safety Commission regulate firearms and ammunition. And they use this silly phrase of, well, you know, teddy bears are more regulated than our guns. I'm thinking, yeah, really? Did you ever have to ask permission of the FBI to buy a teddy bear? Because that's what we have to do when we buy a gun, you know. But just imagine the Consumer Product Safety Commission regulating ammunition, to George's point, I think it simply goes away. Tell you what, let's take a quick break here. When we come back, we'll take your calls, comments, questions, and range reports. 866-TALK-GUN. I'm Tom Gresham, and this is Gun Talk. Do you know Sid? If you want a gun silencer, Sid is your champion. Sid is a special kiosk powered by Silencer Shop that has shipped to more than 300 gun stores nationwide, where you and all of your trustees can register, get fingerprinted, and complete the documents necessary to own a silencer in your gun trust. Easy, ATF compliant, and you only need to visit Sid once. Sid, secure identity documentation. Learn more at silencershop.com. Making the world a quieter place. In the war on terror, fighting crime in the streets, in competition and homes around the world, one name in firearms stands out, Sig Sauer. Our pistols and rifles are renowned for their unfailing performance. This same commitment to excellence can be found in our line of SIGTAC accessories and the training offered by the Sig Sauer Academy for unmatched quality, reliability, and innovation when it counts. Choose Sig Sauer. Visit SigSauer.com today. In the field or on the range, you need a trigger you can trust. For over 60 years, Timney triggers have been trusted by hunters and shooters everywhere. A Timney trigger could mean the difference between a great shot and a miss. Timney triggers are proudly made in the USA and come with a lifetime warranty. To order, go to TimneyTriggers.com. That's T-I-M-N-E-Y Triggers.com. The Ruger LCRX is a variation of the LCR that features an external hammer, allowing it to be fired in single action mode. The LCRX can also be fired in double action mode. It features a monolithic frame made from aerospace grade 7000 series aluminum, a patented Ruger friction reducing cam that results in a smooth, non-stacking trigger pull, and a patent pending polymer fire control housing that significantly reduces weight and helps reduce recoil. The Ruger LCRX Revolver, another rugged, reliable firearm from Ruger. What's important in a gun safe? Security, reliability, safety, good looks? It all comes down to quality. Quality that's built in from the beginning. Liberty Safe has made quality products for 29 years right here in the USA. Trust your guns, your valuables, and your safety to Liberty Safe. Did you ever regret buying quality? I didn't think so. Get the best. Whatever your budget, get a Liberty Safe. LibertySafe.com. All right, uh, I did a little checking during the break, and yes, Remington has, in fact, officially announced their new pistol. They've got an RP-45, and they also went ahead and announced their long slide, 10 millimeter, 1911. The uh, the RP-9 and the RP-45, as you might imagine, 9 millimeter and 45. The RP-9 uh, is 18 plus 1 capacity. The 45 version will be 15 plus 1 polymer. We'll call it roughly $500, maybe even 450 street price. When they get that out, the long slide, uh, 1911 is going to be a six inch barrel, match grade barrel, uh, fiber optics front sight, adjustable rear target sights, 10 millimeter ambi safety, or uh, suggested retail price, 1310. Figure it's going to be probably between a thousand and eleven hundred dollars for that. That's pretty aggressive. You know, Remington keeps saying they, 
they want to be a handgun company, and now they say they are a handgun company. I think they have something on the order of 13, 11 or 13, 1911s out already. It's pretty interesting. Uh, what's your take on, on the election? And one of the things I was going to point out is I went to a talk by um, Dana Lash at the NSGW show, and she made a point. She said, look, we got to be ready for whatever happens after the election. You know, election's on November 8th, so what happens on November 9th? Either way. And if it's Hillary, what's our plan? It's a good point. What is our plan? Well, I mean, I suggest to you that at that point, we better be able to pull a whole bunch more gun owners into the gun rights fight. Because right now, what are there? You're in the ballpark, 5 million NRA members out of 100 million gun owners. Give me a break. Triple that, quadruple that, and we have a force that is unstoppable. Short of that, if we continue to have hunters out there who say, I just don't get it. I don't know. You guys, you know, what's the deal with these AR-15s? I don't, you know, they're not going to come get my duck hunting gun. Yeah, really? Okay, sure. I've got a couple of people I'd like for you to talk to in Australia about their pump shotguns being confiscated. Oh, they said it was voluntary. Yeah, it's voluntary. The only thing is that if you don't do it, we're going to put you in prison. Oh, that somehow doesn't sound all that voluntary. Line two, James is out of Brunswick, Georgia. James, thank you for your patience. You're on Gun Talk. Good afternoon. I do expect the administration to do an executive order uh, in its final 60 days with respect to gun restrictions. What do you think we can expect in that period? You're talking about the Obama administration doing executive orders. Yes, sir. Well, I don't know. What are you thinking? They, well, I guess the question is, what can they do that's not uh, covered by law that would be within their purview? Where do you think? Where do you think it would want to go? Oh, I think they could say we're not entering. We're not going to entertain any new uh, suppressor or SBR applications. Maybe mm-hmm. we'll slow down the application process even further. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they can do a lot by um, by executive order. They could simply say, for example. Uh, uh, Pyrotechnic ammunition is no longer legal per executive order. Mm-hmm. I, I don't disagree with any of that. I think that uh, the easy action for them would be anything on the NFA front, and particularly when it comes to SBRs and full auto, they could simply say, okay, we are now through the ATF going to designate those as extremely dangerous and the Second Amendment does not cover those extremely dangerous firearms, regardless of what went on before. Could it be overturned? Sure. Could it be done? Sure. Um, yeah, that would not shock me. I mean, it would irritate the devil out of me, and we'd have to fight to get it undone. But, yeah, I, I think that's a possibility. You know, here's the thing people should understand. And James, thanks for the call. Uh, Barack Obama, when questioned, I don't know, six, 12 months ago, I guess probably about six months ago, about his administration, and he said, you know, he says, I really don't have any regrets about the eight years I've had. Well, he says, except for one. He said, I was not able to pass the gun control that I wanted to get passed. I find it interesting that of all the areas, you know, foreign affairs, domestic affairs, Obamacare, uh, wars, everything else, the thing that he regrets is not being able to restrict your human rights. Because it is a human right to be able to stay alive. And if you restrict the means by which you can stay alive, you are infringing upon, impinging upon, and actually doing away with human rights. And so to tell people you can't have the means for protecting yourself and your family, that's taking away their human rights. Rights, not civil rights. Civil rights are, are basically awarded to you by a government. Human rights exist in an, completely apart from the government. And so for President Obama to say, one of my big regrets is that I was not able to get gun control passed. It's telling. It's telling because it kind of gives you a look into where he is. Not that we needed anything more than what he's already done. In, in, in terms of the government should take care of you. The government will tell you what you can and can't do. The government knows better than you do. The government will protect you 
or not. And either way, it's okay. Because if the government chooses not to protect you, it's still okay because we're the government and everything we do is right. And he's perfectly okay with the government not protecting you. Really. Jill has called in on line one out of Richmond, Virginia. Hey, Jill, you're on Gun Talk. Yes, and never mind gun, this is the whole idea of self-defense that people are against. I was summoned for jury duty the other year, mm-hmm. and I, I've been summoned before. This time the summons said I couldn't uh, take a weapon down to the courthouse. Not only no gun, not only not my knife. By the way, I don't have a gun anymore. I had one once, but it was stolen from me years ago. But anyway, I... I couldn't even take a bottle opener, a certain thick, heavy bottle opener I've got, mm-hmm. the kind that uh, takes, uh, well, anyway, the kind that takes uh, tops off of glass bottles. Anyway, uh, I wasn't even allowed to bring that. So right. I went down there anyhow. Uh, I went down there without a bottle opener. And uh, I just had some ballpoint pens, and I thought if worse came to worse, then if someone attacked me, I could jam that in his eye, in the person's eye. But anyhow... I'm sit- I was sitting there in the courthouse pitching, and I said, first they violate the 13th Amendment by making us come here. Then they violate the Second Amendment by not letting us bring a weapon. Then they violate the Eighth Amendment, no coke in the machines and so forth. But <laughs> not letting us bring our <laughs> I, hadn't, I hadn't heard the coke in the machines amendment. That's that's a new one. But, Jill, I, I kind of like where you are. I, I like your feistiness, and you're exactly right. They say, well, this is a gun-free zone. Really? Except... The problem is, how are you going to protect yourself? Oh, you don't have to because we have protection here. Really? And we still continue to have shootings in courthouses, in courtrooms, outside of courthouses where bad guys wait for people to come out and shoot them there. Yeah, well, you know what? Tough. You don't get to protect yourself there. It's, it's, more, it's more of the same, and what the same is, is... Them saying your life simply isn't important. And that's the Barack Obama and that's the Hillary Clinton way. Now, one, I have an idea. What if she got elected and then she got impeached? That would make them the only husband and wife both to be impeached presidents of the United States. A singular achievement. It's not much to look forward to. Then again, I think we have other things to talk about. 866-TALK-GUN. Sign up for our Gun Talk newsletter and join the Truth Squad at www.guntalk.com. Now, back to Gun Talk with Washington Times opinion page regular contributor, Tom Gresham. All right, back with you. 866-TALK-GUN, or just our one Tom Talk Gun, singular. That'll get you in here. Um, yes, the election, the election, the election. Inc. In case you're not a political junkie, in case you have not paid attention to it, have not watched any TV, here's what's happened in the last 48 hours. The FBI, head of the FBI, Director Comey, sent a letter to the U.S. Congress on Friday, essentially saying, hey, when I was there in front of you guys testifying and you were wrecking me over the coals for not prosecuting Hillary Clinton for all of the crimes she has committed, I told you I would keep you posted if anything else came up. So I'm letting you know, we just found tens of thousands of her emails. And here's the interesting part. Where were they? No, I didn't get it from the Russians. They were on Anthony Weiner's computer. Anthony Weiner and Huma Abedin, his wife. Of course, Anthony Weiner being investigated for, and with any luck will be sent to prison for, his texting of minors, sexting, sending pictures of his junk to minors. People do go to jail for that. One would hope that someone would see to that with him. Now, this is Huma Abedin, Hillary Clinton's closest advisor, who questioned by the, uh, by the FBI said she had no documents, she had no emails, she had destroyed all of her devices, which, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If you know you're being investigated and you take a hammer to your phone, do you do that because you have nothing to hide? They took hammers to the phones 
and destroyed them so no one could get to the data that was in there. Yeah, you, you always do that when you're innocent. Hmm. But let's move forward. So the FBI announces on Friday, we have found tens of thousands of Hillary emails. And oh, yes, they don't say .gov. They are Yahoo accounts and their other accounts. And oh, my gosh, some of them actually went to the president and the president's answering them. So that means that the president lied when he said he had never he never realized that she had other servers, other email accounts. And he said the first I ever heard of this was when the media reported it, except that he was answering her email, sending them to the Yahoo or AOL or the who knows whatever accounts, not the .gov accounts. So now we have the president lying, although we know he does that a lot. So what's it all going to mean? Probably we won't get anything more from the FBI before the election. We're only nine days away after all. And of course, there has been this constant drip, drip, drip of WikiLeaks But the Democrats have been saying, well, pay no attention to the content of the emails that are being revealed. Pay attention only to the conduit through which they have arrived. These are stolen emails. That's the phrase they like. Stolen emails. Why would we be even paying attention to those? Well, because they have interesting content that shows that you're a liar and you're a criminal. And it's actually you're a criminal family. In fact, you may be America's top crime family, the Clintons. Hmm, that's why we might pay attention to it. But in this case, these emails have come off of Anthony Weiner's, I do like saying that, Anthony Weiner's uh, computer. You can't say it's from the Russians. So what do you say? You say, well, we have to, CNN has already called for the firing of the director of the FBI. Huh. This would be the CNN that was very happy when he decided not to prosecute Clinton for her crimes. What's it all mean? Well, a lot of people have already voted. A lot of people voted before this came out. But there are a ton of people who are going to be voting over the next nine days. And then they're going to be voting on November the 8th. And this may be just enough to put Trump over. Maybe. What's your plan? What have you been doing? What do you think is going to happen? Do you have a plan for either way? What are you going to be doing? Hmm. Love to know what you think about that. Line three, Dana is with us, uh, driving to Colorado. Hello, Dana, you're on Gun Talk. I recently applied for my concealed carry in Florida where I live. It's been five or six weeks now, and I haven't got it back. But while I was taking my handgun safety course, which is required to get my concealed carry, I asked the instructor if he had a statistic or a number for how many people with concealed carries actually legally defended themselves or somebody else in the past year. And he kind of threw his hands up and didn't have an answer for that. And I'm wondering if you might... No, of how many instances where uh, people actually did need to defend themselves and legally did so? Well, we don't know exactly. And, but what we do have is a number of different studies that have been done on people who have used guns in self-defense. And the numbers run from the lowest number I've ever seen was in the 800,000 range, and the highest number I've ever seen was in the 3 million range, and that's per year. Obviously, and this is the key to it, obviously, that does not mean that many people got shot. What that means is that in almost every instance, no one got shot. There are cases where people who are carrying guns legally use them and shoot people. But, you know, and I know you understand this, Dana, you don't have to shoot somebody to successfully defend yourself. If they stop their attack and they go away, that's a win. So there have been... I don't know, maybe six or eight university-level studies. And, of course, there's also the uh, National Crime Victimization Study, and that one comes up with a number of roughly 800,000 people who have defended themselves with firearms per year. Now, that may be just pulling a gun out and saying, go away. Uh, It may be literally, in some cases, actually just telling somebody, 
I have a gun. If you don't leave, I'm going to pull it out. And they take off and run. So a lot of ways to look at it. We don't have any hard facts. Now, some states do keep records on their concealed carry permit holders and if they've been involved in a shooting. But they would not, again, they would not have any information on whether this person had a gun, pulled a gun, and said, go away, and the bad guy goes away, and nobody ever gets called. The police don't get called. But it does happen quite a lot. People with guns do defend themselves and their families all the time, every year, hundreds if not thousands of times a day. All right, 866-TALK-GUN, that's our number. You got any uh, range reports, been shooting anything, or are you planning on buying anything for the holiday season? Let me know. Also, what is on your mind? Are you thinking about buying anything in the next nine days? 866-TALK-GUN. If you love to shoot sporting clays, Mossberg has just the gun for you. The new Pro Series Sporting is a full-featured target gun that fits well and points naturally right out of the box. Designed in conjunction with Gil and Vicki Ash of OSP Shooting Schools, the Mossberg 930 was developed to work with you to make clay shooting easier, more consistent, and more enjoyable. This fall, head out to the range and break more clays with the new Mossberg 930 Sporting. Learn more at Mossberg.com. If you carry a gun, you need training. Your concealed carry class was definitely not training. But time, money, and obligations keep you from spending days at a shooting school. The trusted folks at Gun Talk can help. Concealed Carry One, our DVD featuring the Vada Group, covers what gun, what holster, how to carry, where to wear your gun, and much more. Visit ShopGunTalk.com. That's ShopGunTalk.com. Look. This really is life and death. Learn how to stay aware, how to get away, and how to fight if you must. At ShotGunTalk.com, you can get the two DVD set, including Fighting with the 1911 with Tiger McKee. No matter what gun you carry, this vital training info can save your life. Learn the draw, the stance, reloading, vital gear from Gun Talk. That's ShotGunTalk.com. ShotGunTalk.com. No matter what gun you have, you want it to hit harder, shoot faster and flatter, and be more accurate. You get all that with the ammunition from Double Tap. Double Tap's experts select the best bullets, then load them to higher velocities while keeping safe pressures. Shoot small groups. Shoot farther. Use custom hunting loads in your handgun or rifle. Even fire two projectiles with one shot. DoubleTapAmmo.com. That's DoubleTapAmmo.com. Want your next gun purchase to be fast and hassle-free? Well, at galleryofguns.com, you can search through thousands of models from our huge firearms inventory. Find a great offer from a local dealer that includes all fees and taxes. And there's no need to arrange a transfer. Gallery of Guns takes a small deposit on your credit card, and your gun will be at your chosen dealer in as little as 48 hours. Plus, your gun will be covered by our guaranteed lifetime replacement warranty. Galleryofguns.com. Search. Find. Buy. It really is just that easy. A decade since it was first introduced, the Taurus Judge still rules. This isn't just any personal defense revolver. This is an everyday gun. With its decisive stopping power, it's the original five-shot game changer. Today, it's available in more than a dozen models and capable of chambering both 45 Colt and 410 shot shell. You be the judge. Taurus Judge. What legends are made of. Visit TaurusUSA.com. All right, back with the 866-TALK-GUN. Oh, yeah, yes, yes. We have winners. We have more winners. Uh, our Liberty Safe giveaway. Let's see here. Two, two, two. We're giving away, or we gave away, HDX 250 handgun vaults. Four winners. Kevin V. in Riverton, Utah. Randy W. in Oakdale, California. Sarah S. in King, North Carolina. And Deborah H. in Camarillo, California. Two men, two women. Cool beans. Liberty Safe. Oh, by the way, uh, Liberty Safe is doing, let's see here, there was something here I wanted to, oh, they're doing a special deal. It ends, oh, it ends tomorrow. It ends on October 31st. Uh, special rebates on their Colonial 30, Fat Boy 64, and Fat Boy Junior safes. 
Uh, Gun Talk listeners can go to LibertySafe.com special that slash special hyphen offers. But just go to LibertySafe.com. You'll see what we're talking about. Cool stuff there. Tim's on line one, Carson City, Nevada. Tim, what you thinking? Hey, Tom. Hey, um, you know, we've heard uh, the fallout from this big botched FBI investigation and uh, how there was the destruction, the, the immunity agreements and the destruction of the attorney's laptops of uh, Cheryl Mills. And there was another attorney, I believe, I can't recall the name off the top of my head. Um, and that infuriated the rank and file FBI. And uh, from what I've gathered, there's a prominent D.C. attorney named Joe DeGeneva, who uh, has been recently interviewed. And he's also offered to uh, help out any FBI whistleblowers. He's a big, he's a big D.C. lawyer. And he said that he has on good authority that there are FBI agents and also Department of Justice investigators that refused to destroy those laptops. So they were told, hey, as part of this deal, we have to destroy these laptops. And they just knew it in their soul that that was wrong Mm -hmm. and that they didn't do it and that those laptops exist and they're still available and they're under subpoena. So I think this story, that might have been another ace in the hole in terms of uh, uh, forcing the hand of... uh, um, of Comey, Comey to, to huh. realize that this Could stuff be. has not been ruined, and um, should that begin to come out, I mean, who knows what's in that? Well, in, that's, in that's the, the whole thing, Tim, is we, we don't know what's in there. Uh, we I think we have a pretty good idea. It actually kind of goes to uh, line four, John, his, uh, out of Grand Forks, North Dakota, his call. Hey, John, what are you thinking about all these emails? Well, uh, setting the legality of emails aside for a second, Mm-hmm. So we've got these 33,000 emails, now tens or more thousands of emails. When in God's green earth did these people have time to work? Well, <laughs> Those my mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting question. Uh, the only thing is, that is their work. That's all they do all day long. They, If you see them, they are texting on their phones. They are not texting. They're actually sending emails. They're typing on their phones. They send emails all day long. I mean, and I don't get a lot of emails compared to them, but I get 500 emails a day. 500 emails a day. Now, I, I can't possibly read all of them. I don't know what they're doing, but uh, you know, I have somebody who kind of goes through a lot of those, but I'm still answering a co- 100 or 200 emails a day, and it takes hours, to your point. It takes hours. That's what they do. They don't talk on the phones. They don't write letters. They send emails. And, and honestly, that's what most people are doing these days in terms of, of work. They're just sending emails. In fact, occasionally I have to remind some of the younger ones in the office, say, look, if you've sent an email and it's really important and you're not getting a response, pick up the phone. When somebody's on the other line and you're talking to them and they can hear you and you can hear them, you know that they are getting your message, don't you? Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> but, yeah, they're uh, for them. Sending all those emails is their work. James is on line three out of Castor, Louisiana. Conceal carry, James, talk to me. Oh, James dropped. Okay. Well, he was uh, wanting to say that uh, the secure, the conceal carry person, he says, is a non-factor. Huh. Interesting. I don't quite understand. It said basically the security person, the cop, whatever, is going to be the first person to be taken out. Yeah, maybe. Um, here's a question for you. Do you feel any safer when you're at a place where there is security? And I have huge finger mark air quotes around it. When you look around and say, yeah, they got security here. For one thing, if security is visible, if somebody comes in, that probably is who they're going to try to take out. Uh, but on the other hand, in many cases, depending on where you are, the security has no firearm. Security's got a phone or a radio or something, and they can't really do anything. Are you aware that the police have no legal obligation to help you? What? Yeah. Courts have ruled over and over again. If you call the police and they don't show up, you can't hold them responsible. Which kind of goes back to the whole thing of there's only one person responsible for you and your family and their safety. That's me you, right? So you're the one. Why would you abdicate that responsibility? It's up to you. You better be sure that you're doing your job. All 
Hi, back with you. Line one, going to the phones. Byron, that is, is in Bossier City, Louisiana. Hey, Byron, what's up? Hey, Tom, how we doing? Love the show, man. Thank you. Hey, I had a quick question. I've got a family member um, who is uh, born in 1960 and just recently did a concealed carry class, successfully mailed into uh, with his fee to get his permit, and was denied because uh, when he was a, a young man, he was uh, arrested on a misdemeanor charge. Uh, hasn't had any issues since. He's a, a business owner, uh, has had background checks for employment, as a contractor, had no issues, and uh, was denied. I was wondering what you recommended, if there's anything we could do to get that expunged, or not not necessarily that expunged, but to try to get his concealed carry permit. All right, two, two questions. Was he convicted of anything? Um, not that we know of. Um, he, he They hired a lawyer at mm-hmm. the time. Again, this was in 1980, and... Um, and and it was supposed to be taken care of, and has never come up since. Well, it doesn't matter um, if it's ever come up. I mean, in the question, if they don't know that if he's a convicted or not, that's kind of critical because if you got a conviction, and the other thing is, what would what was the charge? Uh, possession. Okay. Did he answer yes on the form when he was asked, "Have you ever been arrested?" Uh, that's a, that's another good question. Uh, yeah, so, I, mean, I would think so. Yeah, because, I mean, we actually have people who say, well, that's they told me that was gone a long time ago, and so they answer no when they're on the form where it says, have you ever been arrested? Well, it's still on the records. So what it's going to need to do, I would say call the state police office. Now, and the, here's the problem is they are swamped. They are just absolutely swamped there. Um, and try to find out, okay, where do we go from here? Uh, but they need to track down this charge. They need to find out what was the disposition of it. Uh, was there a conviction? If there wasn't, then they need to get all the paperwork on that and then resubmit it. If he if he didn't say on the form he had been arrested, now he's got a problem there. It's, you know, to your point, you got a lawyer, you're going to have to work your way through it. But here we go. Um, one, you know, it's a shame on one hand, but on the other hand, you got to pay attention to this stuff. And if you've got, and this goes for anybody, if you have a charge from way, way back, and you think, oh, that's old news, it's never come up before. It will come up. It's still on the records. And when they start uh, doing their background check, they're going to see it. And they're going to say, wait a minute, this guy was arrested, but on the form, he said he wasn't arrested. Well, okay, boom, you're denied. It's got, real simple. You've got a clerk or somebody in the office who simply looks at the record on the screen and says, yes, there was an arrest. He said he was never arrested. Click, denied, kicked it out, next, moving along. Because I've got, you know, a hundred of these to do before lunch today is basically what she's going to be thinking. I mean, I've talked to the, the nice ladies there, and they are overwhelmed. I'm talking about in Baton Rouge, where this is done with the Louisiana State Police. This goes for anybody. Byron, I appreciate it, and I hope you can help him out. I would uh, tell him to stick with it. I think he can get there. It's going to cost him some money. He's going to you know, have to dig in and figure out what has to be done. And I would see if I could work with the state police and just say, guys, what do we have to do to, to get this done? And they may say, well, this is what it's going to take. You're going to have to get this expunged or whatever whatever it is. That's where the lawyer is going to come in. Have you seen the YouTube videos of Colian Noir? Yeah, he's doing things for the NRA these days. Uh, he is the very smart, sharp guy who's doing these videos on the Second Amendment and guns, and we're going to have him next hour here. He'll be his first time on Gun Talk. He is a a terrific spokesman for gun rights, and I'm excited to be able to have him. We'll also be talking about uh, some new ammo. You didn't think there's anything new in ammo, did you? Yeah, well, there is. There's new ammo out there. And, of course, uh, a little bit later on in the uh, show, we're going to be talking about some new guns and some new things from SIG, including a mobile shooting range that can bring a shooting range to your town, set it up downtown, and you could be shooting. If you'd like to be a part of that, call us, 866-TALK-GUN. I'm Tom Gresham. This is Gun Talk.